guys welcome back to the channel so today we're just gonna do um, a little makeup look fluff the hair out I ask you guys um, if you had any questions for me it didn't really matter I mean it didn't have to relate to hair or anything like that just to general questions and I got some most of those pertaining to hair so Um, I'm gonna start off, I need to do a little moisturizer because I'm feeling a little dry today. So I'm gonna use Refer. This is their light hydration cream. Mm. Here's the packaging. And I'm gonna use about that much. Do some eye drops and uh, City Beauty came out with this amazing lip oil. Um, it is for the nighttime, but <laughs> I find that I like using nighttime stuff in the daytime. I don't know, it keeps my lips um, more hydrated to me, I think. There's a packaging of it, it's really pretty. But it's City Lips Night Oil, it's what it's called. Came with a cute little package. So, probably been using this um, probably for about a week now. Applying that to my lips, do a nice scrub, and then apply the City Lips Night Oil. I'll leave that information in the description box if you guys are interested in checking that out. Okay, so we're gonna get started on the brows. I'm going to uh, give you guys the first question that I have on my list here and it says this one is from Jan Wig. she wants to know um, I'd love to know if you have any suggestions on maintaining moisture for extremely dry hair especially if you have very hard water she says I'm losing my salt and pepper hair by the handful on a daily basis because I simply can't keep it from drying out. Um, well, that is a very good question. I don't, you know, I'm here in Georgia. Um, I don't have the experience with hard water, um, but I would think that if you were to check out a shower head um, filter, one that filters out all of that stuff, like, you know, any kind of minerals or things that's harmful to the hair, that's probably gonna help a lot. I know they have them on Amazon because I've really been thinking about investing in one myself. Um, that's the first thing that popped in my head when you said that. Um, now, it says, you know, as far as just maintaining moisture for dry hair, yes, I do have dry hair. I experienced it a heck of a lot, especially um, the gray areas, uh, more so than, you know, the areas that are pigmented. Um, so, I just make sure that I, I try to wash my hair deep condition once a week. The deep conditioning for me is key. Just making sure that um, when I do use a really good deep conditioner, um, like the one that I normally use, I'll place it here, is um, Melanin Hair Care. They're, um, I think it's deep plumping or, let me get it. Got the Melanin, this is their plumping deep conditioner. And this is relatively new. Not new, new, but it's relatively new. 
Um, and I have a video where I tried this out. I really, really do like it. Um, it's a really good deep conditioner. And, um, and I guess I've used it probably now for about four or five times and kind of learned the product. So for me, I like leaving this on for about 45 minutes. Um, and I'll take uh, like a plastic cap or whatever and put that on my head, wrap it up in a nice warm towel and just go on about my business. Um, also, another option is the Olaplex, the number eight, is their Bond Intense Moisture Mask. I do love that. I watched, just washed my hair and I used my Olaplex system. So the number zero and the number three, I use those. Uh, this is new, the little trigger spray. So I love that they have that trigger on there now. It used to be just a little squeeze bottle, but then they have a trigger where you can, you know, you can kind of control where you want it to go. Um, and I used the number four C, which is their clarifying shampoo, to do my hair and everything. So I used my Old Pup system this past week. But I do find that um, having that pretty structured um, maintenance with your hair really does help with the dryness. Got so. a little Sephora brush. I love this little brush. So cute. And that's the um, NARS. This is their, um, their soft matte concealer. And I mix the color Armand and caramel into a little custom blend color there. And just go in here. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put on gosh knows how much concealer, which I didn't really need to put that much on. Oh contour. <laughs> I'm using my my Dellium tools. The this one is 951. This is the double dome blender. I love that brush. It's really cool. Really cool. So Oh, I guess we should answer. Oh, let's look at another question, shall we? Okay, let's see here. I just kind of got going. This was a good one. It says, hey girl, how you doing? Oh girl, mm, if you only knew. But keep that happy smile on your face. Um, When you are super busy, do you still wash your hair once a week or can you stretch to every two weeks? Um, she says, I have an ever-changing work schedule, uh, no set schedule. So it is difficult for me to be consistent um, and my poor hair is confused. So that was Desiree Jackson. Oh, oh gosh, I can't even talk. Desiree Jackson. Okay, so Desiree, I'm with you 100% because sometimes, um, oh, well, let me just tell you what I'm using. I'm using the Melt Cosmetic Rust Palette. This is a beautiful palette, but yeah, it's a gorgeous palette, I love it. And it's so pigmented. The lightest colors come off on melanin skin beautifully. You would think that they would come off kind of, at, no, they come off true color. So I love that palette. I'll stick that one also in the description box. But anyhow, um, and I'm just lightly touching my lid with these, with that dark color, because it's going to come off. Woo, honey, if I go any harder, it's going to pay off. But um, Desiree, yes, I do skip weeks sometimes because 
it gets really crazy. I try to keep to that seven day rule. Doesn't always work. The best thing you can do is get in the shower and hydrate your hair. I mean, soak it, soak it, soak it. You rinse your hair like you're washing your hair. Do, you know, your leave-in conditioner. Um, if you're gonna twist it up, twist it up. If you wanna pull it up in a top knot, pull it up. You know, if you're going to wear a wig, wear your wig or your scarf. But um, that's probably going to help you get to your next wash so your hair is just not totally dry. So that's always an option. And I do that a lot when I know that I don't have time for my full hair routine. I just used the number three wrapper. And so now, <laughs> as you can see, see there's, there's two here. This was their professional line. This was the matte black line, but, um, but yeah. Um, so going back in with uh, rust from my melt palette. not too too dark I don't think but my brows sure are <laughs> we'll try to fix that <laughs> oh lord I think I'm going through a hot <laughs> oh, mercy yeah I got a little got a little warm there okay So let's go ahead and get to picking. So I don't have to worry about taking the twist out because I twisted it last night. Well, these back here, because these are, I call this um, the angry part of my hair. Yeah, should be angry a lot. So. Um, she might get angry again, but, um, but anyhow. <laughs> Y'all know I usually like to at least change into a little shirt or something. We're not doing that today. We going with the warm up. did hair did and y'all just have to you know get with this little old tracks yeah that's what you used to call them track suits <laughs> I don't know what they call them now um okay so let's finish up the questions really quick all right so um, I guess this is ID Trollinger I think that's right if I messed it up I apologize really but um, the question is, did you experience dryness and breakage when you transitioned to gray? And what products do you use to keep your hair moisturized? So obviously we've already gone over what I use to, you know, what, what my products of choice are. So my staples, of course, are Melon Hair Care and Olaplex. Um, and as far as experiencing dryness during my transition, um, I would have to say, uh, 
yeah, I, I would say yes. Um, but with regular maintenance and doing what I'm supposed to do, my hair is, yes, it is dry, but it borders more on dry to normal. As far as the gray hair, yes, the dryness was there. So um, for me, I do have to keep up with my washes and my deep conditioners. This is the last question. Um, how do you handle people noticing the transition and their eyes going right to the gray growing in from your natural hair color? I think that's a great question. And that one, oh, I can't see who that one's from. Um, I cut off the name, but I'll, I'll, I'll go back in and I'll post it here so you guys will know who actually asked that question. I do notice that people, that, um, <laughs> I think people are curious because they see you with your gray hair and they kind of wonder, okay, <laughs> was that intentional? I mean, like what? So they're looking and I, I don't know if they really know what to say, but a lot of times I don't do anything. Um, it, it doesn't bother me. I, I, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not bothered by it, nor does it give me any kind of complex whatsoever. No. Um, if anything, I think it's kind of funny. Um, and it, actually, it probably ends up being more of a statement piece than, than anything. So um, people will look. Um, I do get stares sometimes. And if anything, it's, you know, hey, you know, your hair looks great. I, mean, I, I think it's awesome that you're embracing your gray hair. I can, I can see how, you know, especially when you're first going gray. I think when I first went gray um, or started going gray, I was very self-conscious of it. I didn't know how people were going to respond. I didn't know how family was going to respond. So, yeah, it was, it was a little scary. But... Um, I guess for me, I just wanted to, um, I really wanted to accept my decision to go gray. So I wanted to make sure when I started really getting into the journey that I made sure that I showed confidence in my decision. So it wasn't, you know, any kind of, oh, well, you know, I, I didn't want to relax or I didn't want to color. So, I mean, I didn't have any other choice. Um, I don't know if I, it, I never went into it like that. It was just, I got tired of coloring. I accepted it's growing in the way that it's growing in and I'm just gonna move on. <laughs> so, and you try to do things to make yourself look appealing, to look attractive to you. And I think that's how I've gone into this entire journey is just liking what I see. So I think that for me was the most important thing. Ava, do you like what you see when you look in the mirror? When you style your hair, do you like it? Yes. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> so I, I, I think that to me is probably one of the biggest things is you have to get to a point, and it's not to say that you have to do that, you know, time you transition, that you have to be, you know, confident and, you know, oh, I'm embracing it. Because I think it is difficult for a lot of people. The aging process is not easy. It's not something that, you know, that's easily accepted. A lot of times I think about aging and, I think about my age and I go, what? It's just one of those things that I think you have to take day by day. Some days are better than others. Um, so, and, and you just, you know, you kind of take it in stride. But that's just my take on it. But anyhow, guys, it's been amazing as usual coming here with you guys. I don't have any wine, but I do have my gallon of water that I gotta finish today. <laughs> Oh, and I guess I need to talk about this last show that I just did. I didn't get a chance to really come on here and talk to you guys about it, but I'll make some time and um, 
We'll talk about the show, um, how I placed, how I felt, and what's next. So I know some of you are really curious about that journey. Um, you know, I, I just kind of, sometimes it's kind of hard putting a whole bunch of stuff on here. Um, so I try to keep it to just, you know, hair, makeup, and occasionally sprinkle in the fitness journey. So, but that's how it is. Anyhow, guys, have an amazing day and have a good one. See you in the next one.